Hi, welcome to our channel and thank you for stopping by. Today I'm going to do a flip through of the Ecosystems Science Unit Study from the Good and the Beautiful. I bought it on the day it came out and my hard copy hasn't arrived yet, but they do give you the PDF so that you can print out extra pages of the things that you need. I haven't looked through it yet, I just printed it and I wanted to do a first look through with you guys. The one thing I did notice about this one that's a little bit different from the other science units that I've purchased and seen from The Good and the Beautiful is that the photography and the artwork is a lot more vivid and vibrant, which is a big plus in my opinion. I just really like the new look that they're moving towards. Um, so let's get started on this flip through. When you order a science unit, um, you can order the PDF or you can get a printed copy. They mail the printed copy and they also give you a PDF so that you can print out. As you'll see when we flip through, there are a lot of pages that you'll need to um, print out extras and cut them up and if you have more than one child. It also makes it really easy to reuse these for multiple children. So let's get started here. So the table of contents, they have some pages, unit information, read aloud and book list, um, lesson extensions for grades seven and eight because these science units are really meant for K through six. Honestly, I wouldn't start using them until about third or fourth grade with, with my students. Um, you'll get a list of supplies needed, vocabulary, and looks like there are nine lessons, so maybe nine to 12 weeks of schoolwork in here. Introduction to ecology, abiotic and biotic factors, levels of organization, food chains and food webs, energy pyramids, interactions of living things, terrestrial biomes, aquatic biomes, and ecological succession. Here's our unit information. It goes over, as with all of their other science units, the journal, the wall, how to prepare the lessons, the mini books, the activities, the videos that they include for you for free. Um, it's the goodandthebeautiful.com slash science videos. Um, if you're interested in doing their science units, I suggest just go viewing those videos. Look through it, gives you more of an idea of what their content is about. Um, <clears throat> Right here they say that some lessons include extra content for children who are a little bit older in grades five through eight. If your kids are younger, you can skip that or you can add it in for older kids. The next page shows the read aloud books they do offer through their library and I did order them. I believe they're $6.99 and $7.99. Um, they do have some sample pages on their website. I'm pretty excited. This one seems like it will work for both of my girls who are currently pre-K and um, third grade, the ecosystems in your backyard, um, quite a few less words on the pages, but a little bit more meaty content, so probably my older one will, uh, will be more interested in that, more interested in that. Um, they have several other books that you can go goodandthebeautiful.com, again, backslash science, and click on ecosystems, and it will give you all the information on other books. These are how to use the lesson extensions for your older children, grades seven and eight. They have optional books and optional product projects and things that your older kids can do, different kinds of note taking that will get them prepared for the higher level sciences. Your supplies needed for this. I was really excited that for ecosystems, it's not a very extensive list. I'll read them out to you. There are no experiments. There are just small projects. They have measuring spoon, honey, Small household items like a hat, scarf, sunglasses, garden gloves, mittens, umbrella. It looks like there's going to be a food project. Um, these are all optional, but chocolate pudding, green sprinkles, gummy worms, animal crackers, and lollipops. Then a drawer full of silverware, scissors, and glue. Rice, colored pencils, measuring cups, a cookie sheet, a pair of dice, scissors and glue, some jars and water, salt, grass seed, empty food storage container, rock glue and scissors, and a handful of soil. Really the only thing that you would need to go to the store for probably is the um, grass seed. I bet you're going to grow a little biome there. So here's our vocabulary words. Um, before you get started with a science unit, you would cut out all of the vocabulary words and glue them up on your science wall throughout. There's typically several pages of these. I do love the artwork. It's They're moving towards 
a more colorful, it's just more eye-catching to me and to my kids. I love it. More vibrant and vivid instead of the gentle photos that they've used in the past. Lots of vocabulary for this. Oh, and when you do order, um, <clears throat> your science units come unbound, just like this, a little bit heavier paper, um, so that you can cut. I usually cut and you do whatever I need, and then I put the lessons into a three ring binder. So here is lesson one, introduction to ecology. It looks like you're going to have some, <clears throat> looks like you're going to have a small, you're gonna to tape together some pictures to read to them. So this is how it works. Um, it tells you exact, it's, it's scripted. You can go off the script for discussions, but they tell you everything that you need to do to teach the lesson. So right here, it's um, read this to the children and there are questions and pauses for responses and then suggestions of things that you can do to uh, encourage more discussion. Here we have them going for a walk outside. Then you paste your words onto the science wall, do the mini books that you have put together, and then there's more reading, and then a science journal. It looks like most of this could be done on one day of science. Um, I would say one day a week or break it into two days. We usually like to break one science lesson into two or three days. Here's the things that you will paint together. This is more like the previous artwork more like the previous artwork of the good and the beautiful. They're still including some historical artwork. Um, this is the mini book. So the reason they give you the PDF with a printed version is so that you can print a mini book for each child. These are things that before you start the lesson, you'll want to go through as a parent and prep. My kids sometimes help prep. I don't like to let them read the books, but they do prep and they get they get to each keep a mini book. Here's the extension for the grade seven and eight. Um, this looks really good. So you would have them read each section below and then choose one of the keystone species and do a before and after of what the ecosystem would look like if this species suddenly disappeared. Think carefully about which species would be affected and those effects and how those effects in turn affect the next species. This is a really good project. Um, Actually, something like this was uh, a destination imagination project for my daughter's, some of the choices for last year. So that's a really good project for the older kids. Lesson two, again, the reading. There's optional supplies for younger children, and that looks like where the snack comes in. It looks like you're going to be making one of those little putting things in a, in a jar to eat. Um... You've got what you read to them, the science journal here. It tells you exactly what to have them write and do. That's kind of a pro and a con of these. Um, my daughter gets kind of bored with being told exactly what to write. So we go off of that sometime. The science wall, here's an activity to do, and then additional content for older children. Um, it looks like, okay, maybe this science... Okay, no, here's the optional activities, and here's the activity for the younger children. Isn't that cute? Making a little edible ecosystem, and I really think older kids would like making that too, just because it's so darn cute. Um, that was a really quick lesson. These are the creation cards that are used in the lesson, so a few pages of that. Again, you would print out one set for each child. Looks like a game there. That was a really quick lesson. Um, these lessons are really short. The other, <clears throat> the other good and the beautiful unit that we worked on was arthropods, and I have to say that we were all really bored with that. It felt like the lessons were really long, lots of writing, lots of being told what to write in the science journal, and not a lot of activity. Um, not a lot of hands-on so we didn't really love that i hope that they consider updating arthropods to this newer newer style that they're going towards here's your extension again for grade seven and eight it's about earthquakes and ecosystems and it has um videos and research articles and has them writing a journal writing in a journal here's the lessons of organization look how pretty this is so um 
<clears throat> so it gives you your prep right here for each child print a copy of this and for each child print a copy of that. Again, follows the same format. Science wall, you're giving them, showing them diagrams as you read and talk about things and then probably having them cut and paste on each of these and then putting that in their science journal. I don't know, I haven't done it, but this is just gorgeous. It's beautiful, kind of cartoon, so colorful. I love it. Love the font. It's bold. I just, I love the new direction that they are taking with their, with their content. And honestly, they're um, redoing their math. And I hope that they move towards a more bold and updated version for that. Here again is for seven and eight, um, grade seven and eight, an organism study. And they don't put it on here, but I think a really fun thing to do in this unit for these older kids and maybe even the little ones, order some owl pellets from online and uh, dissect those. You can find out a lot. I remember doing that in sixth and seventh grade. Here's a food chain. Looks like there's a game and arrows to play with this. Start with your science wall here. It has lots of um, videos right here. And again, you don't have to go find the links ahead of time. It tells you right here, go to the Good and the Beautiful Science videos and look at it, watch them there. And it gives you the discussion questions and the answers and um, dialogue to further the discussion on these. So some content for older children. It tells you how to play this game. Another little story here. Let's, here's the game cards. This is just really great. I am loving it. I'm not a science. Science was never my favorite subject. Um, my kids like it. So I try to find things that are interesting and also easy for me to do with them. Here's again, they have an extension for the older grades on every lesson. That's amazing. Here's energy pyramids. Again, it's got the stuff you'll need to do to prep exactly what you need to read. Oh, look, here's how you, um, <clears throat> looks like you'll be labeling your measuring cups and pouring rice. Mini books, science wall, additional content for older kids on Yep, measuring cup labels. Rice paddy fields. I do um, like how they tend to put information about different cultures into every lesson where applicable. That is great to me. This is a mini book. Look at the color, just the photography and the colors are amazing. And I printed this on my EcoTank, so the quality isn't the best, but if you have a cartridge printer or when you order the PDF, like I said, my PDF hasn't arrived yet. I just wanted to get this out, but um, I'm sure it's just really, really, really gorgeous. So much detail. Energy pyramid. Oh, cool. It's going up with energy loss. Review games. Extension. Probably wouldn't get too down and detailed and require this, but this looks like stuff that my third grader would love to read and just dig deeper into, which is the great thing. I always have her Google and look up on YouTube kids. Um, interaction of living things and symbiotic relationships. There's just more. And here are the games for this lesson. Um, if you're going to be using this for multiple kids, I would probably print out these games and puzzles on a bit thicker paper, maybe cardstock, so that they can last. Um, when we have a game, my kids will play it all week long. So there's your extension again. <clears throat> Nearing the end. This is, oh look, art observations. See, they've even included art in our science lessons. is about all of the ecosystems. Here's the art lesson. Oh, these are so beautiful. I did see these when I was printing out. My kids are going to love these. I might laminate them. And then here's the climate influence. Oh goodness, this is just great. So they'll be gluing 
photos and check marking it off about all of the biomes. Great learning activities, even for the little bitty ones. That's what I like. When my four-year-old wants to join in on science, there's always some activity where she can cut and glue. And she sits and listens, even if she's not getting the full learning, she's getting an introduction to all of this stuff that she wouldn't otherwise be getting. Let's see, here's, <clears throat> has more. It tells you when to use the optional read-alouds on the book list, which is online. The Good and the Beautiful backslash science. Check it out. Um, here's a wetlands activity that you're doing with a sponge and water and grass seeds. So this looks really fun. Um, yeah, it looks like it should be done in about a week. Another thing would be putting tadpoles in a jar if you have access to some tadpoles. Um, here's the stuff where they're really learning. Um, looks like they can glue these words on for the... Uh, for the science journal. You could also have your kids write. My older daughter is not into the cutting and gluing. She usually just prefers to write with a pretty colored pencil. So I let her do that. Here is your extension activity. And then ecological succession. Yeah, so then it tells you to look up and discuss certain quotes. Here's your science wall again. And this is it, guys. This is, I think that this is a really fantastically done science lesson. Like I said, we weren't huge fans of arthropods, but I'm excited about this one. I think that the, I think that the color and the content and that the lessons are so much shorter and quicker in this. Um, I mean, we would have this done in one or two lessons per week, so I'm really going to love that. I'm excited to get started, and I will post a review when I receive my books that I ordered, and I will also post another review when we finish it and let you know how we liked it all. Thank you for watching. If you found this content helpful and you want to follow our journey of homeschooling, dance competitions, planning and goal setting, and hopefully my 2021 fitness goals you should subscribe to our channel hit the subscribe button hit the little bell to get a notification whenever we upload new videos and we will be reviewing all of the um all of the good and the beautiful units as well as all the other curriculum that we have used this year for homeschooling in third grade and pre-k thank you